Hey everybody, Sean here from Shooty School. Can you count to four? I can count to four. We've been doing it our whole lives. But beginner, amateur, intermediate, and expert musicians, they count to four their entire careers, but they get better and better and better at it. And the reason why is it's more than just counting one, two, three, four. It's developing your inner clock, that spiritual side of timekeeping that's inside you, inside your soul. And uh, I know it sounds a little spiritual, but it's, it's the truth. This is why veteran musicians have such a good feel. They're not just statically counting the four. They're feeling that count. And so I'm going to try and have something for everybody in this video with the amateurs up front. We're just going to make sure we can count the four. And we're going to just try and do it as accurately as possible. So try and tap your foot to this. Look at the other information on the screen, and we're just going to count to four in three different ways. In quarter notes, which is just one, two, three, four. We're going to do it in eighth notes, which means we're going to use eight syllables to count to four. One and two and three and four and. Then we're going to use sixteenth notes, meaning we're going to use sixteen syllables to count to four, meaning one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. And that's it. And when we're done, I'll chat with you for a minute and we'll do a more intermediate exercise. So without further ado, let me count you in. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, one, and two, and three, and four, and one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one, two, three, Four, one and two and three and four and one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one, two, three, four, one and two and three and four and one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one, two, three, four, one and two and three and four and one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one two three four one and two and three and four and one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one two three four one and two and three and four and one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one two three. Four, one and two and three and four and one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one two three four one and two and three and four and one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one two three four one and two and three and four and one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one two three four. One and two and three and four and one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one two three four one and two and three and four and one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one two three four one and two and three and four and one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one two three. Four, one and two and three and four and one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one. Well, I hope that exercise was a piece of cake for you. And if it wasn't, go do it again and again or once a day or watch my accelerated learning video on my channel. Maybe that'll help you optimize how much time you should spend on learning something for the most effect. Did you notice how in the previous example I had a grid going in each one of those little bobbleheads of me counting? was divided up into quarter notes. Each bobblehead was in charge of performing whatever happens inside a quarter note. And I think that's a good way to, to view stuff up front as an amateur because a lot of time signatures, not all of them, three, four, 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 five, four, those are time signatures. They're all based around and defined by quarter notes. And a lot of stuff can happen inside a quarter note, 32 notes, 64 notes if you're crazy, or nothing, or one note, you know? And so instead of looking at huge compositions and trying to wrap your head around a whole verse or a whole song at a time, zoom into the quarter note because the, the history of music theory really focuses on a quarter note. And I hope that makes sense. And here's one more thing about all my bobbleheads in the last example and in this example. You notice how I'm counting, uh, speaking, counting, and all those bobbleheads, they're all bobbing together. They're not doing it like a machine. It's not down to the millisecond they're in sync. 
but they're all within a few milliseconds all in sync because that's how well I'm counting and all those heads are keeping track of that counting it's fluid they all understand where to bob their head now this is why counting is so important and feeling time is so important because if you can't count on your own without me without this exercise as good as I do and you get on stage and you perform with timing that's not as good as this how do you expect that crowd to sync hundreds of people 10 people 20,000 people however big that crowd is how do you expect them to all bob their head if your timing isn't as good as counting like I do you know you have a <sighs> this is an opinion you have an obligation to get good timing because if you're getting on stage and your timing isn't this good you're gonna wonder why people are trying to talk louder than your band you're gonna wonder, wonder why people are walking over to the bar to get drinks while you're on stage it's because you might be missing the most foundational element of music which is timing which is why I believe it should be your priority to get timing out of the way first because it doesn't matter how good your melodies are how good your voice is whatever flashy stuff you do on top of timing if it's too bad timing no one gives an F it's bad so think about all those bobbleheads moving at the same time if your timing isn't good enough to command a crowd of a thousand people to bob their heads like that you have problems and you have work to do and that's why I made this video I'm trying to encourage you to count to four better and better and that pursuit should never end your entire career in this into more intermediate video I'm just going to introduce to you triplets and we're only going to use one one type of triplet an eighth note triplet but there's quarter note triplets eighth note triplets 16 note triplets and so on and so forth we're just going to do one which I think is the easiest and most common to get into the thing about triplets is they have three syllables per beat one a lit, two a lit, three a lit, four a lit see we're still counting to four but we're dividing each of those quarter notes by three three syllables and what we did in the last exercise all those note durations can be divided by two or four one and two and three and four one and two and three and four and it you know so that's why triplets have such a cool feel and they really turn heads when you combine triplets with straight feels and so anyway an eighth note triplet is one a lit, two a lit, three a lit, four a lit. Okay, I'll count you in. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, one and two and three and four and one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one a lit, two a lit, three a lit, four a lit. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one o lit two o lit three o lit four o lit one two three four one and two and three and four and one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one o lit two o lit three o lit four o lit one two three four one and two and three and four and one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one o lit two a lit three o lit four o lit one two three four one and two and three and four and one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one o lit two a lit three o lit four o lit one two three four one and two and three and four and one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one o lit two a lit three o lit four o lit one two three four one and two and three and four and one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one o lit two a lit three o lit four o lit one two three four one and two and three and four and one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one o lit two a lit three o lit four o lit one two three four one and two and three and four and one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one o lit two a lit three o lit four o lit one two three four one and two and three and four and one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one o lit two a lit three o lit four o lit one two three 
four, one and two and three and four and one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one oh lit two oh lit three oh lit four oh lit one. So I hope you did well with the eighth note triplet, and if you didn't watch that part over and over again take a break watch it again try to understand it before you move on triplets are important they exist everywhere you'll start hearing them all the time now this next exercise is for advanced to experts you could say the thing about this last exercise is you create it i'm going to create something randomly off the top of my head and and lead by example but you create it and i'm not going to use a metronome and a quick note to amateurs is you should probably be on a metronome often when you first start pursuing music. But maybe not 100% of the time, because if you're on the metronome 100% of the time, you know, and you don't understand what it's like to just jam or play in free time, then that metronome could hone you into like a soulless robot, you know? So I encourage metronome work. I don't encourage that that's all you do. You need to get out and jam with other people. You need to jam without it. Like you need... You need both worlds, okay? So in this example, I'll, I will not have a metronome. And um, I'll be walking down the street. I'm gonna go find a dead end so I don't get run over. And I'll be considering my feet the quarter note. One, two, three, four. And the exercise is this, is I'm gonna take all the rhythms that I've talked about in this video, quarter note, eighth note, eighth note, triplet, and sixteenth note, and I'm going to randomize when I'm gonna say that. Like every single quarter note I walk, I'm gonna change the rhythm, or every two quarter notes, or whatever my skill level at this moment is, I'm just gonna make it as tough as I can and challenging, and uh, hopefully I don't mess up, you know? I haven't done this stuff in a while. So if I successfully do that, then I might look at this whole video you're watching right now and go, okay, I understand these four different types of note durations. Not only that, I can count them in time and I can actually perform and play with them, you know? And it's quite a feat if you haven't done it before it is. And another thing is when you get to that point where this video is old news, stop vocalizing the counting but keep all this information in your head and pick up your main instrument and now do this exercise that we're about to do and just randomly start adding rhythms every quarter note ba 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 you know and just randomize it but understand it and pre and premeditate it and knock it out of the park in real time then at that point you may have leveled up big time taking all this verbal counting and applying to what a, whatever instrument you're most passionate about, you know? Let's not stop this path of just getting better at timing because you're always going to hit that threshold where you think you can't get better. But when you get better, you go, oh, I was wrong. My timing sucked. I'm going to get better and better and better and better and better. Like, keep working on this. You, you will not regret it, okay? And I'm walking. My feet are the metronome. One, two three four and let me just recap the note durations we counted in the last exercise one two three four one and two and three and four and one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one oh lit two oh lit three oh lit four oh lit i did that all while walking okay sorry if this sounds brutal it's a little windy but this is what I have. So anyway, let me just start the exercise. I'm going to mix all these note durations randomly and just try not to mess up. So here we go. <clears throat> one, two, a well, lit, three, and a four, and one, and a two, a well, lit, three, and a four, a lit, one, and two, and three, four, and a one, and two, and a three, and four, and a one, a lit, two, a well, lit, three, and a four, a lit, one, a lit, two, and three, and four, one, and a two, and a three, a lit, four, a lit, one, a lit, two, and a three, and four. So that's a great example, actually. <laughs> didn't do too bad at all. Um, I'm actually going to listen back to it, and this is what you should do when you do this. If this is not the type of exercising you do when you're just getting into this, this is very important. This is the most important thing of the whole video. Is You can count, all, count with me all day long on my videos, but no one's checking your work. It's like jamming along to your favorite band. Like, if you don't record 
you jamming and listen back to it, you don't know if you made any mistakes. It all sounds good to you in the moment. So what you should do is you, re you should record yourself doing an exercise like this, but record it and listen back and check your work because you can't truly sign off that you are getting better if there's no progress to, if, there's, if you don't witness your progress. So if that didn't, please, if this exercise, by the way, you're going to make up your own exercise. You're going to do it off the top of your head like I just did, but if that doesn't please my advanced or my expert, you know, viewers, then... You know, I was just thinking of this right now. Let me invite you to a video where I'll, maybe I'll make it tonight. It'll be an intro to singing and playing at the same time. So if you mixing rhythms like this in real time off the top of your head in time successfully isn't challenging enough for you, then why don't we do the same thing except do two rhythms at a time, one with the mouth, the other with the instrument, and we'll do an introduction to singing and playing. Otherwise, for you amateurs that this is tough for, be patient. Your inner clock will grow if you're passionate about it and you're patient and you put the time in and I encourage you to do that. So, shot from shooting school, rock on.